Welcome to another episode of Observability at AWS. And today I have a very special guest. Welcome, Avi. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Great that you found some time and that we found some time to sit together and talk about something super interesting. Um, but I, I don't want to steal your, your thunder. Please give us a, a quick introduction. Who are you? What are you doing? And what are we going to talk about today? Perfect. Um, I'm Avi Khanna. I'm a product manager on Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. Uh, one of the people I get the pleasure to work with is Michael here. Um, and uh, today we're going to spend some time talking about Prometheus, Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus, and uh, hopefully some of the value adds it has for customers out there. Cool. So on a high level, what, what problem does, does that service solve? It so sounds awesome, but what problem does it solve? So around uh, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, as we started down this journey, um, we heard a lot from customers that were using Prometheus today that they were having trouble scaling their Prometheus instances, whether that be to handle higher time series volumes, deal with longer term retention of data, uh, you know, whether that be for stability and high availability purposes in terms of being able to query and manage that query scale and query variability and pre-provisioning. So there were a lot of scalability and availability challenges that we saw customers having with Prometheus. And that kind of led to this idea of, okay, how do we build on this? How do we provide a service that um, Amazon might be able to offer that helps solve some of these challenges? Um, one of the key open source projects that we saw emerging uh, in recent times was Cortex and Thanos. Uh, you know, we, we decided to look at Cortex and utilize Cortex as the data plane for our Amazon managed service for Prometheus. And so Cortex really offers that long-term storage, high availability, querier scalability uh, that's helped solve a lot of those sustainability, availability, and scalability challenges that we saw customers having. Okay, cool. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, long-term storage, federation of multiple Prometheus or whatever the, the correct <laughs> uh, plural of, of Prometheus is. Um, that's cool. Um, but how does that actually work? Like how, how give, me, give us some intel. So how does it work? Uh, the, the nits and the grits. Well, you know, in this case, I actually have a quick slide I want to pull up. It just helps me talk through it. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Let me share my screen here. Let me know, Michael, if you're able to see the screen in front of you. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. So just a quick kind of high level overview of what the service looks like here. So we've got three major parts, uh, two of which are kind of, you could say, at the extremities of the service and then the core Prometheus workspace is kind of that key concept we'll dive into here in a second. So as a customer, you might be running a Kubernetes cluster, or you might be running ECS containers, you might be just running EC2s, and you might be monitoring uh, those systems with Prometheus or some other model today. If you are using Prometheus server, you know, one of the quick ways you can leverage Amazon Managed Service Prometheus, you can plug in a remote right from that Prometheus server, forward that data into a Prometheus, Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus workspace. A workspace is kind of an isolated unit where you can store data, uh, query that data, alert against that data. It's an isolated self-managed uh, unit uh, to house and warehouse and query that data that, uh, that you're collecting from these environments. Many of our customers use a single workspace across all of their clusters. Some might divide it up as a, a uh, workspace per cluster or per environment. It all just depends on how they want to house and manage that data. We also support AWS distribution for open telemetry as an additional collection source that you can use to send data into Prometheus or Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. Once again, just builds off that same remote write capability. And the idea here is we want to build off of what the community already has, the starting point that customers already have. If you're using a Prometheus server, it's very quick and very easy to send it into Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. In terms of the service itself, there's a few key components. There's a scalable ingester that'll scale with the amount of time series you're sending us so that we're able to you know, scalably and reliably ingest that data, index it, make it available for querying. The analogous querier that scales up with the query volume and the query uh, size and um, uh, complexity that you're querying for, making sure that we're able to deliver on those query promises efficiently. And it supports PromQL just like your Prometheus server does. So quite literally, we're trying to be very Prometheus compatible. We wanna make sure that the same Prometheus APIs that you're very comfortable with that you're used to using in your Prometheus server environments, you have that available in the Prometheus workspace. Now it's just more accessible, reliable, and you don't have to worry about the maintenance and management of it. Can I quickly interrupt you here, just on a, on a very high level. So the box in the middle, that is 
the service we're talking about, that's Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. And on the left-hand side, that's essentially the right part. So that could be whatever environment, could be EKS, could be ECS, could be your monolith in EC2. As long as you have this remote write into it, you can write into it. And on the right-hand side, where it says Grafana, Amazon Managed Grafana, that's the read path, right? That's where the, the metrics are queried using prompt killer. Did I get that right on a high level? You're spot on. So the middle yellow box here is really what Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus is. It's the scalable backend for your Prometheus data that you can query, alert, uh, store data within. And then of course, because you have to get data in, we provide these different collection integrations on the left. And because visualization is one of the common kind of outcomes of collecting this type of data, a lot of our customers need to visualize this data to be able to do their dashboarding or ad hoc querying or monitoring needs. That's where Grafana, uh, which is we've seen as a very popular pair with Prometheus in both the open source environment, as well as with Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus comes into play. And then of course, Amazon also offers Amazon Managed Grafana as a kind of managed offering of Grafana that customers can all, always leverage uh, in a very integrated fashion with Amazon Managed Prometheus. Right, awesome. And um, I think it, it's um, GA now, meaning um, ready for prime time. Uh, we, we recommend to, to use it in production. And um, can we actually, now that we have a high level understanding of, of what the, the interfaces in the box are, I'd like to see it in, in, in action. Can, you, can we actually see, see some, some example? Of, of course. course. This is always the hardest part. You got to do a real time demo. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, let's, uh, let's give it a whirl. All right, so here we are inside of the Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus console. Uh, the reason why we're starting here is just to show you kind of how you can create a workspace via the UI. There's also ways, of course, of doing this via the CLI or API, you know, whatever is the use case uh, that drives that type of uh, entry point, so to speak. If you want to create a workspace, you can click this Create Workspace button, give it a quick alias, add any tags you'd like to add. Uh, the tags may help you, for example, for you know, billing purposes, if you want to assign that to certain budgets whatever the uh, kind of policies might be that you have associated with your tags. In my case here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and go back to a workspace I've already created in the past called test dash obby We're gonna jump into that. Uh, you see that it's active. Uh, it gives you information about its remote write URL, its query URL. Uh, the remote write URL is very important as we look at how we integrate the collection unit that we were talking about before, whether that be AWS distribution for open telemetry or Prometheus server. We're gonna basically plug this remote write URL into their remote write configuration. And that's gonna be how we connect the collector to the actual workspace itself. Of course, all of these things are also controlled by IAM um, in SIGV4. So that way you can control, you know, who's able to send and who's able to access uh, the data inside of that workspace. Right. Similarly, that the query, is, go on, sorry. That, 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 that SIGV4 support that is uh, upstream in Prometheus native there. So you just need to, essentially all you need is this remote write URL and as long as you can configure that, and I think the region is also necessary, you're you're good. You can ingest data. Exactly. Just... Cool. Spot on. The SIGV4 support is built into Prometheus. All you have to provide is this remote write URL in the region. You're good to go. Um, it connects and makes sure it authenticates via that IAM permissions and everything else. So um, it validates that you, you have access to this workspace and you can actually uh, write to it. Similarly, on the query side. That works also cross account. I suppose that might be a, a, a use case for some customers? Correct. Uh, there, It does work cross-account and you just have to walk through the steps to actually permission it to be cross-account right. accessible. And we've got a great blog out there that uh, talks through the steps um, that you can go ahead and follow. We'll link, we'll link to that. Cool. On the query side, of course, here's the query URL that you might use in your Grafana to connect uh, the Grafana data source to this workspace as well. Uh, we'll walk through that a little bit as we get into the Grafana side of the demo. Inside of the uh, different tabs here as well, we've got the rules management and alert manager as well as tagging here available for you. So if I jump into rules management, you can see the different rules files that have been uploaded. In this case, test rules one. If I look into that, you'll see the actual rules themselves. You know, popping right back to that idea of we want to be as Prometheus compatible as possible. We, we took a lot of effort to make sure that those same rules files that you're utilizing in Prometheus, the same rules files that you currently integrate in your Prometheus config, that you're able to upload them and submit them to AMP and you have them available to you um, inside of Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. In a second here, I'll actually show you how you might submit them through a CLI. So it's not just me clicking on uh, UI buttons and not showing you that it actually works in action. We'll actually walk through that in a second, but I did wanna highlight just kind of what the output looks like here. 
And then similarly on the alert manager side, we support the full alert manager capabilities that you see in Prometheus as well. Uh, it's a very similar type of uh, template. Uh, there's two sections. There's the template file section that stores all your kind of standard Prometheus template files that might e exist. And then there's an alert manager underscore config session that has all the same properties that you have in your alert manager uh, in the open source as well. From a receiver standpoint, uh, receivers are the ways you connect the outputs from alert manager into these downstream destinations, whether they be a, uh, you know, a pager duty, a ops genie, a victor ops, or in our case, predominantly SNS as a uh, destination for these alerts. Uh, today, you can use SNS um, as the destination for your alerts from which you can then send it to these end destinations. And there's more information available about that on our docs page as well. All right, with that, I'll stop talking and I'll start doing some CLI commands because Michael's telling me that I need to uh, do more active demo work. So we're going to jump into that. All right. So here I've got a quick cheat sheet of commands. Um, this is just so I don't have to hop back and forth. But what we're going to walk through here is actually the process of submitting a rules file as well as submitting an alert manager. And you can just see kind of what that looks like uh, through that process. So step one, let's look at our sample alert manager file. So I'm going to load up a sample rules file. Here we have it. It's just a very simple rules file, it has a group, two group names, test and alert test, two records within it, recording rule 20 and alerting rule 19. It's rather straightforward. We're going to go ahead and just open SSL that. So we're going to do copy this command over here. Zoom out of the way. So the first step is you just have to SSL base64 the file. So that way you can submit it to the CLI and API. Once we the have reason that, why we base64 uh, encoded is because that's how the, the API expects it, right? It expects it as base64 encoded. That is correct. And the reason why what the API expects it as base64 is mostly just to guarantee that things don't get lost in transmission. All right, once we have it base64, the next step is we're going to go ahead and call this create rule groups namespace API call. And what this is, is submitting that rules file that we were showing earlier in the UI walkthrough. So we got to provide it a region, in this case, US East 2. We're going to give it a name. This name is corresponds to the kind of the file name we wanted to represent inside of our workspace itself. So I'm going to call this Michael's favorite rules. We're going to give it a sample rules base64, the workspace ID. And we should be good to go. Go ahead and press enter. And if all goes well, we'll get back the status code creating. Apologies. Um, we'll get the status code creating. That'll allow you to, uh, that kind of asynchronously tells you that the rules file has been submitted, that's in the process of being applied. Uh, the, you know, Amazon Managed Service or Prometheus is in the process of intaking that rules file. We do do two types of validation on your rules file. Step one, we'll validate it when you input it that it's a valid rules file and then we'll validate it as it goes through its application process as well. So in the meantime, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll talk through the alert manager file and we'll come back to the rules file here just to give it some time to create. Usually it doesn't take too long. Let's go ahead and copy this put alert manager definition call. Go ahead and put an alert manager definition. Once again, it gives the workspace, you give it the sample alert manager file. In this case, I've already base 64 it, so we can skip the open SSL step, give it the region, press enter. And once again, it's the same kind of uh, asynchronous update process. You get that message back. Anything that happens in that, uh, any issues that happen along that way, you'll get the error message reported back here as well. All right, we'll let this run for a second, but uh, we'll go ahead and jump into Grafana and see what some of these recording rules and querying, what the querying this workspace might look like. All righty. If I hop over here into my Grafana here, First, questions, uh, first question that we might have is how do we connect this Grafana back to that workspace? Inside of Amazon Managed Service for uh, Amazon Managed Grafana, apologies. We have this AWS tab over here that has these AWS data sources. We can actually go ahead and select data sources. Go ahead and select Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. Give it the region. In our case, it was US East 2. So let's go ahead and find US East 2. It was this one. Oh, wrong region. Let's try again. Here we are. And you can see here my test obby workspace shows right up. I can go ahead and check the box. I can do add one data source. 
and you'll see that data source has been added. And that's kind of the full process to integrate Amazon Managed Prometheus, Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus with Amazon Managed Grafana. It's just as simple as walking through a few of those data sources and adding that in. The process is very similar for Grafana open source as well. Right. And the just to in, in case you know people are not familiar with these AWS data sources, uh, you could also manually just create a Prometheus data source where you need to provide a little bit more you know details. Whereas with this AWS data sources, that's kind of like more streamlined. You just need to select something and and you know you're, you're essentially done. But it's it's just. From from Grafana point of view, it's just a vanilla Prometheus data source, right? But there's no magic or whatever going on. It's really just a simple Prometheus data source. Right? That's what you mentioned earlier on this PromQL uh, compatibility and, and compliance. Exactly. You caught me. You caught me. I went through the streamlined uh, Amazon Managed <laughs> Grafana flow. Uh, you can do the exact same flow with uh, just a standard Prometheus data source as well. Once you have it all integrated, go ahead and hit this Explore button. We'll go ahead and actually hop into dashboards here for a second. Back to explore. Here we are. Select your data source. So in this case, it's going to be this guy right here. And then once again, it's the standard PromQL interface. We're now hitting our Prometheus uh, workspace, Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus workspace. Go ahead and type any PromQL query you want. So in our case, let's type in metric colon. We can see the recording rules we had just created. So recording rule 19, 20, all those different recording rules we had created. Go ahead and graph that. And you can see when it was created somewhere during our demo time here, and that it's been uh, kind of evaluating and executing. Similarly, if there's any other metrics that exist, you get the same standard PromQL capabilities. You can create as many complicated queries uh, that you want that you traditionally create with PromQL. All right. So we did an alert earlier and we created an alert. Where is that? Is that something I see in Grafana or what? what's going on? You're asking on such alert? difficult questions, Michael. I know, right? And so the alert that we had created earlier and that we had connected via our alert manager, we can actually go ahead and go back to that console now. We'll go ahead and check what the alert manager config looked like. That'll tell us where it routed to in terms of the SNS topic. And from the SNS topic, we had a variety of destinations that could have it could have been mapped to. I think in my case, it'll probably map to my email. So we'll go ahead and pull up that email alert here in a second as well. Cool. Hopping back here, here's the uh, template that we had uploaded. And what you can see here is that there's this SNS configs block. What that configs block allows you to define is the SNS uh, destination that you want to send these alerts to. In this case, it's this ARN of uh, SNS receiver two, which is the topic ARN that we're going to send this to. Similarly, we provide that same SIG v4 settings here in terms of the region US East 2. And that kind of connects our alert manager to that uh, SNS topic. There are some access policy items on the SNS topic you have to uh, manage as well. Uh, once it's in that SNS topic, we just create whatever subscriptions we'd like, whether that be to a Lambda that then forwards to PagerDuty, Victor Ops, et cetera. Or in my case, it's going to forward to my email here, uh, being kind of the most straightforward and simple integration we can provide. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen here very quickly, and then I'll pull up the email and we'll share it right back. Because we obviously all love to get a lot of emails from, <laughs> from Prometheus or, or Ant. That's, that's always cool. <laughs> oh, that's there the there used to be a time I would get uh, one email every five minutes because of my testing yep. um, setup. And let's just say my inbox was not happy. Yeah, I can imagine that. Cool. Um, and while while you're waiting, um, in terms of uh, these destinations or, or receivers, I assume that there will be a few more things coming up. Uh, so probably it's it's not going to stay SNS forever alone. Um, and but for now, as you said, uh, we have I think also blog posts and, and docs around how to essentially build it yourself uh, with with the help of Lambda functions, etc. So that's perfectly possible. There you go, firing, firing away. Here's kind of an alternative format of that as well, since uh, you can now put it both in JSON format and when it goes to an email, JSON is not very useful, but you have that available as well. And of course you do have a more text oriented format that you can right, uh, right. send it in. As well. I personally prefer chasing an email every five minutes over anything else. So that's perfectly fine. Awesome. Well. 
that was a, a very impressive uh, demonstration. Thank you so much, Avi. Uh, any any final parting words before we wrap up? I, I think I just want to echo what you were saying earlier. I think this is just the beginning of our long journey forward. We're very excited to continuously being be able to help customers with their Prometheus journey and uh, continue to provide them some great feature sets and help them with their availability, scalability, mining of this data, and hopefully down the line, help them uh, you know produce more stable systems. Cool. And I believe, I hope I don't uh, share a too big secret, you might be around at reInvent if people want to find you and talk to you in person, get an autograph from you. So. <laughs> I would love to get customers' autographs. I think those are more valuable than mine at these moments. But Very yes, good. I will be there at reInvent. Awesome. I'm looking forward to meet all of you. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Abby. Thank you so much, Michael.